looking for wholesome, convenient meals for this jam-packed fall season? Get Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, and get eating well off your to-do list in just two minutes. Get 50% off Factor with code HOMEKIT50 at factormeals.com slash HOMEKIT50. Welcome, everybody. It is another exciting episode of Home Kit Insider. You've got me, Andrew O'Hara, here with my pal, and a man, I believe this is true, who likes to spend his spare time carving tiny ducks out of wood using just his teeth. It is Stephen Robles. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing well. I was with you until the teeth part. I was like, how did you know I have thousands of small wooden ducks around my house? You know, I will say, uh, have you ever, when when I was a kid, did you have one of these kits where you could, like, burn into wood and you can kind of, like, make letters or whatever and, like, you have, like, the charred black marks in wood? You ever have one of those little kits, wood-burning kits? I did not. No. Oh, okay, well, I always try to actually find a real-life, uh, actual true thing from what you introduced me as, but I, I don't know. But that is something I did. I had one of those kits. You could, like, sign your name into, like, pieces of wood or make designs. I was no artist, but... Uh, so anyway, yeah, no ducks. But well, I'll tell you what is. Uh, no, I don't have a good transition for this. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we should talk about HomeKit and the iPhone 15 because uh, we we have them in hand. Last time we recorded, we did not have the iPhone 15, and now we do. I have mine right here. Uh, maybe we should talk about cases at some point as well. This is uh, blue silicone, winter blue uh, silicone. But anyway, uh, thanks to two five star reviews by the way. Luke Carb is from Australia. And Nick W1 from Great Britain. Two international five-star reviews. Andrew, let me see. Do you have, where's your iPhone 15? You got yours there? Where is it? There it Thank is. You. Natural titanium. There it is. I don't know why both of our cameras are struggling to focus. Here we go. <laughs> there it is. Uh, now, you go, are you a caseless? I forget. Do you go caseless? I, I generally go cases, caseless. By and large, you'll see me without a case. Especially with these new ones, they feel really good. So I do. Uh, I, do. I, I am starting out going to be predominantly caseless, though. If anyone also like follows the YouTube channel uh, for any period of time, mm-hmm, you know I mm-hmm. do these massive case roundups every year. Like All the each cases. video will have like a hundred cases in them, uh, and they'll be like forty-five to an hour long, uh, and I'll do one for each of the new phones. So. I got like crates already <laughs> full of cases. Um, okay, what do you think about this, Stephen? I, I, mm. I, this is our internal. This is our internal discussion right now. Mm. I'm debating about doing a video on alternatives to Apple's leather case, and I don't 100%. know if that's. Do right. uh, you think so? Hundred percent. I mean, I feel like that's half the news right now is that fine woven is terrible. I mean, the, the Verge literally had an article like so many people are like fine woven. I actually took a picture at the Apple. I went to the Apple store to return my fine woven case. So I went over to the fine woven case display. And as I've seen multiple times on social media, there's just like just fingernail scratches and all the fine wovens. Like, I don't know if people are just wanting to like I did in the wood when I was a kid, scratch their initials into these fine woven cases. But that's what it looks like they're doing. Uh, so I, I do think a leather case alternative is valuable because there's also I, I'm, I'm doing the same. I'm trying out multiple leather cases. So I have two right here. Uh, you probably you might have some in your position already, too. But these are the Nomad in the brown leather and then the Bellroy. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my word. My kid, if you're watching on YouTube, I don't know what is going on with Stop my having focus. a face. It's trying to find your face. Usually, there if you cover is. your eyes, it's fine. Okay, here we go. This Mine is the, won't uh, even do eyes, man. If I've got like an ear, my camera's like, I see you. I see you there. I know. Don't stop it's, playing peekaboo. It's so creepy. It's still trying to do it. Anyway, this is the Bellroy in green, the Nomad in brown. Uh, not super crazy about either of them. Uh, spoiler alert. I will say, most people are like, the Nomads are great. Nomad does make great stuff. And I think their buttons are some of the best, too. Like, Nomad buttons feel great. Uh, they're metal buttons. And the, there's even, like, a little ridge on this one. But it's two-tone, meaning, like, the edges are, like, black. And the black is, the back is brown. And so some people don't like the two-tone. But also, this is a very vain thing, Andrew. I don't know how you feel about this. But no third-party case can have the blue Apple logo on the back because they're not Apple cases. <laughs> and so my main thing is, like, most cases are just this like flat color 
which is okay. I mean, I don't necessarily want like a brand, like Bellroy has their brand on the bottom, which is like, okay. Some brands have like a little icon, like the bull strap. I wanted to get a bull strap, but they're like, they don't ship till Octo like late October. And they have a little bull. And I'm like, that's, at least that's cool. It's not just like the name of the brand. Like it's a cool little bull icon. So I don't know, man. I would I would watch a leather case roundup from you, Andrew, because I think it's valuable. People are looking. Okay. People are looking. Well, I'll give you I'll give you some spoilers on hmm? on some ones that are that are like piquing my interest um, yes. right now in the, of the pile. So first, I'm really liking the new Moft cases, M O F T. So mm -hmm. they already do some like neat stands. Like I have I happen to have one of their stands right here. Uh, like this is their new wallet. We just talked about this guy, I think, right? Yes. This is the techie one. This looks just like the Moff <laughs> one that has like the uh, folding tripod situation going yeah. on. Or you um, got the ESR. They have, like, the wallets too that are similar. ESR one, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so Moft has a new case out and it's it's a synthetic leather, eco leather, whatever, pleather, pick something. But they sure. say it's super super durable and i love the feel of it like it feels like a nice warm leather they've got metal free floating buttons which is what you want so you want buttons that are essentially going to be free floating so that there's like a metal back or something that make contact with apple's buttons so there's no there's no you, when that button moves on the outside you're just moving the apple button that's going to give you your right. best feedback so you want to look for like these free floating buttons on your cases so moft has really nice buttons on theirs they're anodized aluminum buttons that stick out the sides Really cool, yeah. and they do have the action button button. So there's a whole thing for case manufacturers this year because there was a there was debate on is it going to be a toggle? Is it going to be a button? Is it going to be like capacitive? Um, you know what what's it going to be? And and people weren't sure because with like, these companies don't get you know schematics from Apple, they're getting like leaked ones, and there's going to be a cutout in that position, but they don't know what's in that cutout. Like so that's why like you know we'll get like blanks of these iPhones, um, but because these are based off of the schematics, but we don't know like what cameras are because right. it's, just, it's just like the physical <laughs> dimensions. So a lot of companies did that. So some companies, which is, a, this is another one of my favorite cases, like Peak Design, put out a whole statement and a whole thing where they're like, hey, we're sorry we have cutouts where the action <laughs> button is. Yes. And they're basically offering anyone who buys their cases now a free upgrade to a new case with a button in that spot. They're right. already making new cases, but they've got, you know, tens of thousands of cases already that they've already basically sold that they're they're working on. So I thought that was really cool. Like, they're going to just swap it out to new cases. So the Peak Design cases, I like a whole lot. They have new colors for the iPhone 15. The Moft case is a really nice leather alternative one. There's a company called Banks, B-E-N-K-S. This mm. isn't leather, but it feels really, really nice. They actually use, like, Kevlar. And most of the Kevlar ones I see are like from a company called like um, Pitaka, which is cool. Yes. But this isn't as thin as those, so it, it feels a little bit more substantial. And it has like a really nice like warm kind of feeling to it. it. Just feels like good in the hand, and they've got good metal buttons and stuff on the side. So Banks is a really nice company. Um, I had mentioned the Pitaka one. The Bellroy ones are nice, but they did go with the cutouts. I'm hoping we see like a version two from them down the line with an actual action yes. button there. Um, uh, Mujo is always a nice one. I like their Hardly. cases. Their leather cases are super nice. Uh, and I do have the Bullstrap one, which is really oh. nice too. I liked, I slipped that one on and it was pretty cool. So I think those are like my, some of my, I, I'm probably forgetting some, but you'll see them all in the roundup and I'll, I'll probably do a dedicated one just for the leather alternatives because yeah. I, I just want those like, like you said, the Nomad one is nice, but I, I like the full wrap of leather and I don't like the TPU bumper sides. So right, right. The bullstrap one too is one of the only or one of the very few that do not have a bottom lip, which I know is you know some people like not having a bottom lip. And now with the USB C port, if you want to be plugging in a bunch of accessories in there, which a lot of things do work with that USB C port now, uh, it might be a little easier to not have the little like the hole on top of the hole, like to have an unencumbered <laughs> USB C port uh, might benefit you. Which I, is... I like the open bottom, so yeah. the, I'm a fan of those. Oh, Alto I, has uh, nice leather oh, ones. Okay. See, I like, it's weird. I like both. Like, I like the open bottom for access to the port and for swiping up, but I don't like the look so much of the open bottom. I like the symmetrical, like, all-around case. So I, I, I want like both. I like the look better without, because it's got all of those holes, and it just looks kind of 
yeah, busy and stacked. And like when there's like a case like bullshit that has just like a curved line that just goes around, I think it looks nice and and sleek. Like okay, uh, all right. But then again, I'm like a no case person, so no case. No, I'm, so look, the other thing is the new rounded edges feel great in the hand without a case, and so. I, I, I keep taking it out of my case, and I hold this. Here we go. This is the blue titanium, uh, which actually looks blue. My, in the uh, light. It actually does <laughs> look more blue in that light than it normally does. Yeah, usually. Um, my 15 Pro review came out, and it uses the, the, the blue titanium one. Yeah, this is actually the most blue I've ever seen it right now. <laughs> this is pretty wild. Um, so, But it does feel great in the hand without a case. It's just... I want to go caseless. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I have the strength. Anyway. Pay $10 a month for your Apple Care and go with no case. I and... have Apple Care. I have Apple Care. No okay. problem. Then get out of here. Get out. <laughs> why why just bother? Little... All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, I know. See ya. Um, anyway, so let's let's try and find the home kit angle here. Let's talk about very quickly the action button. <laughs> I feel like the action button has been the place, like the USB-C <clears throat> port and the action button has been all in the news. The action button is cool because obviously you can program a shortcut. And now there's been like 1,000 posts on social media and videos about what you can do with the action button. I feel like the craziest stuff, you can have menus and shortcuts, and we can talk about that in a second. But there is a an app, it's a third-party app that adds actions into shortcuts. And one of those actions include get the orientation of the device whether it's in portrait or landscape and you can actually adjust the function of the action button while it's running the shortcut depending on its orientation and uh, I think John Gruber stated that he programmed his so when the phone is upside down namely in your pocket that the action button mutes and unmutes the phone it'll toggle back and forth if he's holding it in landscape like this the action button opens the camera and then if he's holding it like normal, like portrait, uh, then it brings up a menu. And I'm like, that sounds so cool. I feel like it's so confusing. I would have to think too hard about what it's about to do when I hit the action button that I would not press it as often. <laughs> and so I think I've stuck to a shortcuts folder. What do, you, what do you have right now as your action button? I definitely went with the shortcuts folder. I think that is is just the way, like, those are mine. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did a, a, a short on this because um, I think it's really cool. Mine's not going to focus at all. <laughs> no, it's uh, not. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I love the shortcuts folder. So I, I've got ones for, like, checking my blood sugar. I like even launching different apps because um, yeah. I do keep, like, a minimalist home screen and stuff. So, like, right. having basically extra app icons that I can bring up whenever I want to is really helpful. Um, so yes. I got like Apple Frames, which I can't wait to be updated for the new devices. Because when I, like, I, t I, I ran Apple Frames, so like the resolution's the same, right, on the new screens. And, okay. I, and I'm like, why does this look so wrong? Oh, it's because the bezels are the bezels. too chunky and it looks bezels. wrong when right. I was looking at it. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. Yeah, the bezels just aren't the right size. But yeah, I, I have one to like feed my cat. So we had a we had a sponsor on the the video side of things for another robot <clears throat> mm. another smart home vacuum it's the new uh x8 pro because i guess we're gonna give them a little shout out here uh which is it seems like a nice robot and everything and they wanted to do like an integrated spot into the video so like so it was like a natural transition and not just like a break here's an ad and then sure. keep going so i was trying to find ways to like integrate it in and like one of the ways like you can literally create like a robot vacuum button like press mm. this and it'll run the Siri shortcut and it'll send out the vacuum to clean your house. So like the uh, the button is really cool. cool. There's so many things you can do with it. My friend just got a Tesla and now he literally wants to buy an iPhone 15. Like just half to... the reason just so he can start <laughs> his Tesla <clears throat> yeah. from his action button. I get it. I get it. I um so in my shortcut folder, it does look nice than a sh nicer than a shortcut menu. So I did the folder. And to do that by the way, you don't have to like create a shortcut that is a folder when you go to the action button settings in your iphone you can actually say show me a shortcuts folder so just create a folder in your shortcuts app put whatever shortcuts you want in there and the ones i have done i have set focus mode i do have a menu that shows me several home scenes so if i want to run a home scene i have that menu pop up i have toggle rotation mute device open the camera and then i have two actions which i've found have actually been useful 
One is iCloud passwords because we still don't have a dedicated app for iCloud Keychain. I can see that. Uh, yeah, I, just a one tap away from my iCloud passwords has been really nice. And then I also have a watch TV shortcut, which then brings up a menu asking me what room I'm in, like where are you watching. It will wake that Apple TV in whatever room I choose from the menu and then open my iPhone to the Apple TV remote app for that Apple TV. And that was a shortcut that I was running before from the like today view or whatever that screen is uh, to the left of your home screen. But I actually like it in the action button menu because, again, you can trigger it from anywhere. You know, I think that's the big benefit of having it rather than in today view, having it in the action button menu is that no matter what app you're in, if you're texting somebody or you're watching a YouTube video, you can hold that action button and it shows up no matter what. So it's pretty cool. I like it. So here's a here. Let me ask you a question. So why mm -hmm. I'm curious on um, <clears throat> things like the focus. So especially you, I know you automate so much. Why do you have it set like a focus as one of those shortcuts? Because don't you have like, you know, my, all my focus modes, like someone was like, oh, I set mine to the movie theater. So I hit the action button and then I'll tap on, you know, watch movie. You can, I have, I have a movie focus. Oh. I just put my, our, our movie theater in as the location. I just show up to the movie theater and my phone, my watch are in movie mode and they both like dim, they go into like, you know, theater mode, all that kind of stuff without having to actually manually toggle anything. And most people typically go to like, you know, one, maybe two movie theaters. So like, uh, sure. I see that. So like, I don't know which um, focus yours is set as. And then two, for like your, your TV one, mine seems to know what Apple TV I'm going to use when I open the remote app. So for me, like, why hold a button and then tap when I can just swipe and tap to do the same thing to open up the controller from control center mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. always seems to know what apple tv is nearby i don't know if it's using bluetooth or like the fancy new like airplay improvements but it always seems to know so i just I, i'm in the sure. remote it knows what apple tv and i just hit the button and it wakes up so to me those seem like you know wasted spots well i'll tell you andrew uh first off for focus mode I really only manually enable one, which is my filming focus mode, which mutes notifications, changes my home screen to something that I would film on camera if I'm doing that. And it also sets a HomeKit uh, scene uh, that way. And so the shortcut can actually set a HomeKit scene and then set the focus. And so that's really the only one I manually do, but I do it often enough. And being able to just tap it, I'm, now you've given me an idea with your question. I'm, rather than show a list of the focus modes to choose, I'm just going to have it jump into the filming focus because then it will be one less tap away to do it from the action button menu than the control center. Because to do a control center, you have to swipe down to control center, hold the focus mode button, scroll to find the filming, which is actually like down a little bit on my list. And so it's a scroll and then a tap and hold and then choosing like for one hour. And so doing that in a shortcut, it cuts all that out. The other shortcuts I do are scheduled. I don't do location-based uh, mostly because I work from home, just home all day. Uh, but anyway, I do um, evening focus mode that triggers automatically at 6 p.m. every day, which then changes to only certain people can contact me, and it changes my home screen. And then I have a weekend focus mode that triggers automatically based on a schedule. So it's really just for my filming focus mode. And now that you asked me that, I think I will. I actually go and have it just go to that one specific focus mode from the action button. To your second question, for watching the Apple TV, it is pretty quick to swipe down and choose just what TV you're watching, but I run a HomeKit scene alongside every one of those where I'm watching uh, actions. So if I'm in the family room and I tap, I'm watching in the family room, you know, lights turn off, my hue gradient light strip turns on, the hue box starts syncing, so it's a whole kind of shortcut that runs along with turning on the Apple TV and showing the remote control. And actually, same is true for the other two venues. The, uh, the menu is basically family room, bedroom, and living room. If I do the bedroom, again, it affects some HomeKit accessories, plus turns on the Apple TV, plus shows me the controller. And then in the main living room as well, I dim some lights and all that kind of stuff. So that's mainly because I'm doing like mul multiple actions. I'm doing some HomeKit scene stuff, and I'm actually turning on the Apple TV and, and showing the remote control. So that's why that makes sense that justifies it for you <laughs> andrew uh but anyway it does you're doing all <laughs> okay. your stuff there 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to do I try to do all that stuff. But no, but that question was useful because I I typically only manually activate that one focus mode for filming. All my other focus modes are pretty automatic uh, based on schedule. So, okay, I'll get yeah, I'll give you credit for that. Can I just say this is we were talking about the wallets before, and this is unrelated. Now that I have the Pro Max, because I went from the 14 Pro now to the 15 Pro Max, which is much bigger. It's a big phone, Andrew. I know I know you know this. I know you you're a Pro Max guy, but for me. I've been a smaller iPhone guy, so I'm getting used to it. My pinky, I think, already has carpal tunnel just after uh, about a week of having the phone. Uh, but now I'm like, I think I want something with a loop. I'm not going to do a pop socket. I don't do pop sockets. I'm morally opposed uh, to pop sockets. And so I had this, the ESR wallet, uh, which was nice because it was MagSafe. You can hold some cards into it. And it has this loop. And the loop for holding it. What is with our cameras today, Andrew? I don't understand. <laughs> this usually doesn't give me so many issues. Okay, there it is. There's the loop, and you can put your finger in there and loop it, which is awesome. This also had Find My integration, but it's this proprietary cable, and I don't know where it is. I don't know where the, <laughs> the charging cable is. So anyway, I got I to gotta look for that uh, <clears throat> after the show because it is much more just comfortable. Just take a regular holder. charging cable. Just pick any one you got. Cut Let's off see. the end. There's going to be two okay. wires. Take one wire and touch the one on the right, and then take another and touch the one on the left, and something will probably happen. Trying, I'm trying to plug a USB-C uh, cable into this <laughs> three-pin uh, thing. It's not the cable not is as thick as the wallet. So, <laughs> it, the cable, like it's such a small, thin, short cable. I don't even know where to look. <laughs> so we'll see. I'll uh, make it find it. But anyway, well, I'm like it. I'm gonna try. I'll try and go caseless one more time. But um. Any any other thoughts? I don't know. I think uh, I was gonna say I doing the 15 Pro review. I feel like mm. that is the phone for most people. It is absurdly comfortable. It is smaller mm. and lighter than you know the 14 Pro was. It is such a, a just a joy to hold versus you know the old phone and even the Pro Max. Like this doesn't feel bad by any means. It feels better than the 14 Pro Max, but just using that 15 Pro. Mm. It's it's so comfy. I really, mm. really like that 15 Pro. And there's the whole camera, not a camera issue, but I, I don't know what kind of shots you take most. But as I was working on these reviews, I sat down and I was like, okay, what? Where am I? Where's my focal length? You know, what am what am I using most? And especially for Harrison, like I was using mostly three and four times zoom. Like that's basically all I would zoom in. And it wasn't because I didn't have you know, the option to zoom more. It was just, I didn't like interior shots in the yard. Like so many of these things I was, I was sticking around that frame. And when you compare the 15 pro against the 15 pro max, that 15 pro is better at mm. all of those shots. The photos look much better because what? on the 15 pro you're using your actual telephoto lens for the three times. And you only have a slight digital crop crop for four times. But on the 15 pro max, three and four times zoom is all digital crop. Like it's a, it's a big right. crop in. So you're looking at a lot more noise, a lot less detail on those photos compared to the 15 mm -hmm. pro. So I'm kind of disappointed, you know, on 15 pro max, like, yeah, the, the five times and 25 times zoom shots look great. You can't even do it on the, the 15 pro. But for the my bread and butter shots that I take so much, you you they don't look as good. It's a worse camera in that regard, uh, mm. and you lose the three times portrait photos, which is what I used most often. Now it goes to five times, and I'm like, wow, I can just you're, it's I'm in your forehead. Like I need to like step back now <clears throat> for for portrait photos if I'm using the five times, or I got to get really close for the two times. So. I don't know. It's a tricky spot. I think it'll, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. You know, Andrew, you're talking about photography. If you want to better your photography skills, you know, you really want to get good at it. No matter what camera you use, no matter what lens you use, 3X, 5X, what you should do is go to Masterclass because they have an incredible course by Annie Leibovitz and you can learn about photography from one of the best. And that is the magic of masterclass i would just i just want a round of applause for that transition i just want listeners i know i can't hear you but i just just let me know let me know that you clapped in your heart because i think that was really good i mean 
With Masterclass, you can learn from some of the best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. An annual membership started just $10 a month. You get unlimited access to every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insights, and much more. And there are over 180 classes to pick from. Like I just said, Annie Leibovitz talking about photography. You could talk about space and astrophysics with Neil deGrasse Tyson. And Andrew, let me ask you, do you play cello? No, I don't. Neither do I. But I'll tell you who does is Yo-Yo Ma. And he has an incredible <laughs> class talking about music and creativity. And I watched it with my wife. We are musicians. I don't play cello. But uh, it was just a wonderful uh, experience. Obviously, cinematography is great. Also, Chris Voss. Who does the, he wrote the book The Art of Negotiation, but he has a class that is incredible. Again, communication skills for any part of your life, whether you're uh, a freelancer, you're dealing with clients, or just in the workplace, highly recommend uh, Chris Voss's class. And you can do it on your iPhone, your iPad, on your Apple TV. You can watch it anywhere. And uh, I know Andrew said he has done this before too, but do it on your iPhone. And then if you got to jump in the car, flip it into audio-only mode, it's like you're listening to a podcast. You're good to go. And so you could do all of that with Masterclass. And so gain new skills in as little as 10 minutes. And that's great because you could do it on a lunch break or just binge an entire class from one of the best. So get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as a HomeKit Insider listener, you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash HomeKit. That's masterclass.com slash HomeKit for 15% off an annual membership. Masterclass.com slash HomeKit. That link is also in the podcast description, the episode show notes. You can just click it there. Our thanks to Masterclass for sponsoring this episode. Hall of Fame transition. That's all I'm saying. Hall of Fame. That's all, that's all I'm saying. <clears throat> should we talk so about some HomeKit? Yeah, should, should we talk about some uh, home kit news here, Andrew? I feel like we should. Yeah, I guess we can get into some of it after half let's an hour. Get in this, let's get into some of it. This is uh, Yale. They've made home kit locks for a long time. They now have some home key locks. So they have the Yale Assure Lock 2 Touch and Assure Lock 2 Plus. And one of them, I'm actually not sure which. No, no, no. The, the Lock 2 Plus supports home key. So now this is our fourth home key lock in the pantheon of home key locks we have the schlage encode plus we have the level lock plus we have the akara u100 i'm so glad i remembered all those and now the yale assure lock 2 plus features apple home key and of course you can get the uh the pin pad as well as part of it let's see the home kit enabled one is 290 dollars 290 dollars for this one but nice to see another home key lock that's good yeah absolutely what I thought was interesting, so I had asked him about this because my mm. first thought was like, I I hate that there's two different versions. Why isn't there one that does both? And they're they're like ten dollars apart in price. Um, so I'm like, why why have two? Why not have one that does everything? Sure. Simplify the product lineup. Um, <clears throat> just make it easier for consumers. And I the response I got was I it made sense, which is mm. to add in the fingerprint tech and to add in the home kit tech both add um to the cost oh interesting okay so they get to their their respective price points but if you combine them together you've got the tech for the fingerprint and the tech for the home key that would stack and you're going to end up with a a notably higher price point so maybe this ends up being like at least from what i understood um you're going to end up like probably above 300 at that point and gotcha. they said they also have a lot of people who aren't iPhone users and they don't want to basically force that higher price onto them that don't have home key. So if they combine these together, they were going to end up at a higher price point and they thought that was going to turn people away. They didn't think that price point was going to be, you know, palatable for the market. Mm. Uh, and it makes sense. I still think I'd like to see both. I mean, it makes sense like when it's like described that way, but at the same time, we're seeing others do it. I mean, a car is a, a usually a lower cost example, but they're way below them in terms of price. And I think the the Yale one looks a lot nicer. Like I think that looks really nice on the door there. Um, yeah, it does look good. Yeah, I don't know. The the fingerprint sensing is is really cool. I wish they did more than twenty though. They only have a, a limit of twenty on the the touch version. That's just two people. If you did every finger. 
I'm just saying, I would do at least more than one. I would do at least two fingers. Like, oh, I don't know sure. which, you know, Hannah got a baby in or something. Uh, I would do a finger at least on each hand. And if my wife did, like, we're at four and there's just the two of us. I think it's going to yeah, go you gotta, quick. You got you to gotta have all the fingers in there. But No, I do at least two. I do my two pointers. That's what I did on the Acara E100. And the fingerprint's good, great for the kids, too, because they don't have to remember a passcode. They don't have a device. They can still unlock the door. So I'm all about the keypads. Those are pretty, yeah. Uh, I stand by them. Uh, also, Acara, they've officially released this uh, dual relay T2 uh, internationally. And this is something that goes behind, say, a light switch. And so it would actually, you know, it's a relay to be able to control it. Even if you have a dumb switch, uh, you could put this behind the switch if you have enough room in your, you know, little junction box. And, uh, yeah, the relay is there. There it is. That's all I got. <laughs> that, cool. That, that, yeah, that was it. I think we mentioned it before. It's an in wall just... relay switch. It is in-wall. not super exciting. No, no, that was it. That's okay. Uh, you know, we're glad it's out there. Now, this one's a little uh, pretty cool. It's Zemi Smart. They released their first matter enabled hub with thread functionality. And Zemi Smart, uh, they have made the hubs, which is like a Zigbee bridge. So if you have Zigbee devices, it could get it into HomeKit. Well, now this is that, that Zigbee with the thread support. But it's matter enabled, so you technically you could bring it into the Apple Home app, and then you have that there. So I mean, I mean, they got like every tag on this device that you can have. It's got the thread, the Zigbee, the matter, the Apple Home Kit. It's all there. It's got all the tags. It has an Ethernet jack, USB C for power. Kudos, Zemi Smart. Thank you for not using micro USB. Uh, Good, because that's just everywhere. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. You can get this hub. That's pretty wild. Is that legit? Whoa, look at that. Uh, it's not, whoa, i got to sign in. But anyway, $50 on Amazon. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Ziggy. Not bad. Not bad. Have you, not... um, um, I, 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 it's so hard to, to peg this down. Have you noticed anything with thread on your iPhone 15 Pro Max? I'm, I'm not seeing anything, like, speed improvement wise, uh, but it's hard to tell, like, when your phone is is using thread versus going through your home hub and everything like that i i noticed nothing none none at all and i don't see it listed in like <laughs> the eve app as an additional device or anything so yeah i'm i'm no. curious at how that'll make a difference yeah i'm, I'm it's, curious it's clearly worthy enough for apple to put in there right yeah that is interesting you would think the eve I don't know, maybe they're going to enable, like, you know, the HomePod Mini it had that temperature and humidity sensor that wasn't enabled until whenever, some the, the iOS 16, I think. And so maybe, you know, iOS 17 dot something, it's going to be like, boom, your phone is now thread. I don't know. Could be that. Who knows? Oh, so you think it's not even active right now? Uh, I mean, if it doesn't show in the Eve app under the thread network, I'm looking right now. There's so many devices in here, it's so hard to tell which is which. All of mine just say router, and then a number. <laughs> router 30, router 48, Apple Thread Router 6C, Apple Thread Router 7C. I don't know what any of these things are saying. So I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like Apple has to tell a story around that thread radio to make it kind of a thing. I don't know. We'll see. I'm glad it's in there. In my, in my head, it just is on the network. When you send a command, it'll just send it directly to the product. That's like what it does in my head. Um, I mean, I've yeah. got like light strips here. Like I got one and above me, but I don't. Let's see if it's how quicker you are. Quick you are. How much? How much? I'm in how the much studio. Quicker? How much quicker? <clears throat> Seems pretty uh, normal. Like okay. <laughs> well, there you go. There you have yeah. it. I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe they'll mention it in a future event or software update, but or maybe not. Maybe it'll just sit in there, and <laughs> maybe it's working behind the scenes. Who knows? Who knows? All right, last piece of news. Misa? Misa? Sounds like George R. Binks for a second. They That's released what I was going to say. You just sound like you're doing uh, a very, very rude, racist Jar Jar Binks, Jar Jar Binks impression. Oh, Jar Jar Binks. I regret everything. This is a baseboard thermostat, and yeah, supports HomeKit. Looks very nice. This looks like um, I don't know. Was it the Honeywell? I thought there was a there was a thermostat that looked a lot like this before. It's kind of got like the white dot, 
a digital readout of the temperature, just two controls up and down. This is for baseboard heating here in Florida. We don't have that because we never have to heat anything, but it looks cool if you need a smart baseboard heater. There you go. That is that. All right. I want to talk about the move to Andrew. I have a move to also now. I know you have the move to. Nice. We we both have moves, moves twos. However you pluralize that, like attorneys <laughs> general, and I've li- I have listened to it. My ears have listened to it. Uh, have you got a chance to kind of listen to it? Maybe compare it. Mm-hmm. I know it's been a busy busy. Okay, you have. Okay, I think it is noticeably uh, improved over the move one as far as audio quality. It does have a second tweeter, uh, which we talked about I think on the last episode. So I mean, it's literally more you know cones in there there's a second tweeter so it's going to sound better stereo separation i think is more noticeable but i do think i think it sounds better and uh, i didn't do any kind of crazy drop test like throwing it off my house like people have been doing with the iphone 15s to test their durability <laughs> but uh you know supposedly can withstand some drops but i think it's uh it sounds really good it's really nice it's a it's a good upgrade to the move what do you think i same did you remember, did you have your shortcut run to bring, or your reminder to bring your other one in? Oh! Remember on last? <laughs> no, because we changed that. I, I, I asked to do it earlier, and so my reminder. I'll, okay, hold on. It's going to go, go off it. in one minute. I'm going to go I'm gonna go get it. Uh, talk about the move, two for a minute. I'm going to go get it. Okay. Talk about uh, yourselves. We're going to chat about the move, two. I still have mine here in the studio, so I've been playing around with it, but... It is pretty cool. I mean, we talked about the details last time, so we don't have to go through all the things. But since we're talking about AirPlay things, I've been working on the Apple Watch reviews and like the Apple Watch Ultra, and they're using that new U2 chip for AirPlay stuff, which is pretty cool. So if you aren't familiar, there's a new ultra wideband chip. So I guess not the U2, as Stephen uh, insists on calling it here, but it, it, it uses that ultra wideband chip when you go into a room with like a home pod if something is playing it'll immediately bring up those now playing controls for that room which works so smoothly and then if there's nothing playing it'll just add suggestions to the smart stack which is also very helpful so i tend to listen to specific playlists and it's it's pretty solid just to walk into a room boop open your smart stack and start playing like these playlists that I would normally pull. So I really like these new, we're talking about the U, a second gen ultra wideband chip in the Apple Watch, Steven, and (laughs) how it's able to detect your home pods and pull up those smart controls for media playback when you walk into a room. And I've been really liking them. I got the uh, ultra two review coming out. Uh, By the time this is out, that review should be out, but it, there's nice. not a lot of changes on this watch, but that's the new U2 chip is, or all second gen ultra wideband chip, is pretty appreciative. A U2 song every, plays every time you en- uh, enable the ultra wideband chip. Just starts playing <laughs> out of the air. With I know there's one thing that's been kind of uh, interesting is when I go to try to use the precision finding, first, it always does make the noise, which I don't love. Like, oh, at least yeah. in my experience, I wish you could just use precision finding and not have it start beeping because I want to find it sometimes like when Harrison's like down for a nap. So I, I don't always want the beeping. And then I don't always get the arrow. Like it right. definitely get the numbers on screen get smaller as I get closer, but I don't always get the directional cue right away. So maybe that hmm. just like takes a second to like calibrate it, but it's, I gotta it's, play it's a good upgrade. I got to play around with it more. I haven't done that a ton. This is my move. Which one, one did you get the series nine or the ultra two? Ultra two. Ultra two. You know. Did you have the ultra one? I did. So I got good trading value, two. okay? Don't 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 give me a hard time about this, okay? Just look at my move one. <laughs> look at this move one. There it is. It's a little It looks like you dropped it in a pile of gravel. <laughs> this is what happens in Florida if you uh, leave something outside. Uh, the cross Who would between to live there? Humidity listen, humidity, <laughs> salt. This is on my patio. It's under a covering. It's not like totally exposed to the elements, but it is uh, It is outside, and there you go. That's what it looks like after a year of use, a little over a year. Also got some stuff up here, you know. Yeah, that's what it does. But it still works great. Doesn't affect it at all. Good to go. Anyway, that's my move one. 
So. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so uh, move two. Sounds good. It's a good upgrade. The move one is still on sale. It's only $50 less. I feel like if you're going to get a move and the choice is a move one for 400 or move two for 450 I would go with the 450 I think the move two sounds really good. Double the battery life as well. I would and say you can, the battery life, life alone is worth yes. that upgrade for me. And you can charge other devices with it too. So you could like plug in your iPhone, plug in your AirPods or whatever, and like your Move 2 can charge those other devices from the USB-C port, which is pretty cool. So it's like a big battery, just a big battery pack. Yeah. So that's cool. But anyway, those are the moves. Let us know, listeners, what phone, watch, what move. What does your Move 1 look like if you left it outside and you also live in Florida? But anyway. <laughs> so... And, uh, you know, comment on YouTube.com slash HomeKit Insider. Let us know uh, what HomeKit stuff you got going on, questions you have. And uh, I don't know, like, mention us if you're asking a question, like, on social media and stuff so we can make sure we can see it. And, yeah, thanks for tuning in. It's a fun one. See you next time. See you, everyone. <laughs>